We're so thrilled to have in the living room today Dan Horn, the author of this great book, Anointed Moments, which has a very, very long subtitle. <laughs> Everyday Miracles While Transforming Two Schools, Thousands of People, and a Dog Named Blue. Dan, thanks so much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Today. Right here me. in the Catholic TV living room. I loved, love being here. And I love being set. in L.A. I wish the living room was in L.A. <laughs> really? I do. It's my favorite. My favorite city. More I than Boston? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to go out there after. Uh, after but you went out there <laughs> to, to be an actor, or as we say yeah. in Boston, to be a star. a star. You want to be a star. And what happened? Well, you, you are kind of a star in a way. Well, not the star that I had imagined to be. I, I, I imagine after being there for a couple of weeks, I'd see my face up on the big screen. But um, I realized after about two years that I wasn't a very good actor. <laughs> I would go on auditions and my knees would shake and my voice would tremble and think, what am I doing here? Yeah. And uh, I also realized it, it probably wasn't the kind of lifestyle I wanted to lead. So fortunately, I had my Catholic schooling and uh, I had been a, uh, a teacher before okay. and uh, so I decided to go back into education. Although I hadn't given up the dream entirely, I, I decided that if I saw an ad in the newspaper for a Catholic school principal and I thought to myself, well gosh, if I'm a Catholic school principal, well, what, what do principals do? Not much, as far as I know. They administer. <laughs> sounds very... Yeah, you know. they walk around the school, sit in yeah. a chair. I could still go on auditions. I could still take acting classes. So I mm. thought, uh, I'm going to go become a principal. And uh, fortunately, uh, I ran into a priest who eventually, uh, a pastor, who hired me for my first gig as principal, who inspired me so greatly during the interview process that I, I let all of my ulterior motives go okay. and uh, decided that the school where I was going to become principal, St. Thomas the Apostle, which was an inner city Catholic school, uh, elementary, they needed somebody who really cared and was there for all the right reasons. The numbers were tough too, weren't they, at that time? I mean, the, you mean the enrollment? The enrollment. No, actually the enrollment was very good. Okay. The, uh, uh, the school had other challenges, just based on where it was. You know, it was in one of Los Angeles's, uh, it was a pretty, pretty dangerous neighborhood, a lot of, lot of gangs around. As a matter of fact, during the uh, interview process, uh, we, we were sitting at a table and I was being interviewed in Spanish, although I don't speak Spanish, okay. but everybody at the table, s uh, other than the pastor, the pastor was translating. And um, during the interview, and he said, okay, enough questions. I'm gonna take Dan for a walk around the neighborhood. And I didn't realize it, but he was giving me a test, sort of, because he wanted to see. I was 29 years old, cherub-faced, and from small town, Pennsylvania, and we're walking around one of LA's most dangerous neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. He's showing me uh, apartment buildings where some of the windows had been bricked up partially or all, almost the entire way because of the drive-by shootings and the bullets that would fly. We were saying hello to gang members, and he wanted to see how I would react and if I could handle it and um you passed yeah and uh, yeah, this was the pastor and of course i was with the, the pastor who was i mean most of the gang members of the neighborhood were catholic so he received a lot of respect so there was there was no reason for me to be scared but you passed the test i mean oh, oh yeah yeah flying colors now i have <laughs> uh i have family my sister and her seven kids uh live in arapahoe county in uh just outside of denver and uh they are very connected and friendly with many of the families who lost loved ones in Columbine. And I know you had kind of what they would refer to as an aha moment mm. once. Uh, can you tell us that story and how that affected your respect for the young people that you serve? Well, I, this was, uh, Columbine happened um, in 1999, and I had already told them at St. Thomas the Apostle that it would be my last year there. And I had interviewed at St. Genevieve, and everybody at that table, when I interviewed, told me that the number one challenge, whether it was a student at the table, a parent, uh, the, the pastor, they were all saying um, morale at St. Genevieve was the number one issue. And I had never had to deal with a morale problem at St. Thomas the Apostle. And the, so I was started looking for answers, you know, how, how to boost morale. And the answer came not on April the 20th when the Columbine massacre occurred, but it was about two weeks later 
when the students from Columbine went back to finish their school year across town at their crosstown rival, Chatfield High School. And I was uh, still working at St. Thomas. I would be starting at St. Genevieve in July. And I had the news on, and I heard them say, yesterday the students from Columbine went back to finish their school year. And so I stopped what I was doing, went in front of the television set, and they showed the students from Columbine walking into this school building for the first time since they ran in terror from their own high school. And of course they had looks of trepidation and fear on their faces. And when they crossed the threshold into the building, their faces changed. And you could, you could see them relax. And some of them even started to smile. And I'm thinking, come on camera, you know, turn, show me what they're seeing. And it was as simple as this. The, the students had to do a split shift because there were too many students for them to all fit in the building at the same time. So the Chatfield students went in the morning, Columbine came in the afternoon, and when the camera turned, there was a banner on the wall that read, we love you. And there were notes on lockers that said, feel safe here, welcome to Chatfield. And I thought to myself, that's what's gonna save St. Genevieve. Because basically, that was, that was Christ in that building. Mm. It was the spirit of Christ. And I thought, we are going to become the school that will not wait for disaster to strike before we become our very best. We will be the school, Catholic school, that we will be Catholic each and every day. We will, when I'm, when I'm feeling less than Christ-like, it's gonna be your job to lift me. And when you're having the bad day, it's my job to lift you. And to create that kind of environment where we lift people and encourage people to feel Christ, to be Christ, to see Christ every single day. Now the question was, how do you make that happen? <laughs> and so, it started with how we welcomed our freshmen, and we welcomed the freshmen in 1999 the same way we're going to welcome freshmen uh, next week, actually. We're, we're starting uh, our school year uh, next week. And um, we I had conversations with kids, talked to them about how they had been bullied, how they had been put down at St. Genevieve. The, the enrollment at St. Jen's had gone from over 1,000 down to 300, and morale was in the gutter. And a lot of it had to do with how people treated one another. So I used the example from Chatfield and Columbine where I just talked to kids and teachers. Teachers were a little bit harder of a sell than the kids were about how to leave a legacy, how to change the way we treat people. And so we uh, started working. Our first project was a welcome freshman day where the seniors cooked breakfast, sang welcome songs, and these were kids who did, thought I was being absurd by asking them to sing, and uh, made welcome banners, and um, just wanted the kids to feel really special on their first day. And you know what it's like, Father, when you do something special for someone else, it changes you, you know? And, and, and that's what happened, and that was the beginning of um, how St. Genevieve started to change. There's so much that I want to learn. First of all, I want to learn about how the dog Blue mm. fits into all this story and also uh, how love is the foundation uh, of this Catholic education that you are helping to provide these young people. And you've also been able to, to garner the, uh, the support of people like former President Jimmy Carter, Helen Reddy, and others. Would you come back to the next show and tell us more about this incredible story, Anointed Moments? I would love to. Very good. Dan, thanks so much.